Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be bringing you guys a new homemaking video on how to make homemade pierogies. So for those of you that are new here, welcome. My name is Brianne and I like to create content on homemaking, cleaning, and really all things in the home and motivation. So if you like videos like that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm gonna show you how to make homemade cheesy pierogies. I am Ukrainian and this is like literally in my blood. We make this every single year for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And so our Canadian Thanksgiving is actually this weekend. So that's why I am preparing these today. And I am so lucky to have my mother-in-law help me in this video. So if you wanna learn how to make pierogies, let me show you how. So for the dough, you're gonna need some flour, salt, one cup of water, one cup of milk, and then some oil. You're gonna mix all of your ingredients together into a bowl. So you wanna mix the dry ingredients together and then your liquid ingredients together. So we're gonna put the flour in the one dish. I'm putting about four and a half cups and then about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then in the other bowl, I am mixing together all of my liquid ingredients. Once you get your ingredients all mixed, you can go ahead and pour the liquid into the dry ingredients and you wanna stir it, but you don't wanna overwork it. It's kind of key. So I just kind of stir it with a spoon until it gets to like kind of a really thick consistency before taking my hands and kneading it together. Again, you don't wanna overwork the dough. This recipe will yield approximately 60 pierogies. So what I do is I double the recipe, but I make the dough separately. Once you have your dough, you wanna go ahead and just wrap it up. Don't use wax paper. My mother-in-law gave me that and I thought it would be okay, but it totally wasn't, it stuck. So I would recommend using parchment paper. And you're gonna let your dough sit for an hour and a half. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to just boil some potatoes like you normally would for some mashed potatoes. You're going to strain them. One thing you can do is you can use the water from the potatoes in with your dough and it'll make it so good if you wanted to pre-make your potatoes ahead of time. Then you're gonna make your filling. So with my filling, I just use salt, pepper, shredded cheese, and one of my secret key ingredients is cheese Whiz. I know. So you're gonna put about one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of pepper, about a quarter to half a cup of shredded cheese, and three tablespoons of cheese Whiz. I find this makes the perfect mix of filling. You can add more salt and pepper if you prefer, but that's what I do. All right, so now onto the pierogi making. I have this great investment that I made with this $20 pierogi maker. I highly recommend getting one. And so I am gonna show you how to do it this way, but for those of you that do not have a pierogi maker, you can use one of two things. All you need is some sort of round edge. So you can use a round cookie cutter. I actually just like to use a cup. And so I'm gonna show you how to do it with a cup, and then I will show you how to do it with the pierogi maker. So our dough has sat for an hour and a half now, maybe a little bit longer few more hours than that, but <laughs> we are ready to tackle this. So you're gonna need some flour, and what you do is so that it doesn't stick. The consistency of your dough should be pretty, like, I don't know, like it's not, not too dry, but not too moist. Um, but it should be, if you want it like one or the other, it should be a little bit more moist as you are using some flour here. So. I just like to sprinkle a little bit like this over my counter space so that the dough does not stick. 
So then you're gonna need a rolling pin. We'll see how this goes. This is not mine. I usually have a marble one that's really heavy. This one is really lightweight. So we're gonna see what happens. But you just roll your dough. And you do want it pretty thin. Okay, so once you have your dough all rolled out, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cup and just make little circles around the whole dough. You wanna make sure that it's very evenly spread out and that it's, again, quite thin, but not like, not too thin, but very thin so that the, like, you don't want the pierogies to fall apart, but you do want them to stay together. If you make them and your pierogies are like different sizes and whatever like the the thinness of your dough is not the same throughout you're gonna have issues cooking your pierogies number one if they're too thin they will fall apart and number two if they're too thick they just won't cook okay so it's really important to make sure that it is thin enough but not too thick or thin okay so taking your cup going ahead and just making the little circles And then with your excess dough, you can just set it aside for now. Then you have these beautiful circular pieces to work with, and I'm gonna show you what to do next. Okay, so bringing you in closer here, what you do now is you just take some of the potatoes and put it into the pierogi. It's about less than a teaspoon and then you fold the dough. Just like that. And you really wanna pinch the corners of the dough together. Now, this is very time consuming when you do it by hand like this. And then another thing that I like to do to kind of set the pierogi is take a fork. This step is not necessary per se, but it does help to keep it together. You really want to make sure that the dough is closed, otherwise your pierogies will open when you cook them. And there's your pierogi. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start folding the rest of them. Next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it with the pierogi maker. Now, I highly, highly recommend making this $20 investment. Seriously, it'll change your life. So with this, we're just rolling the dough out very, very thin. And then what we're gonna do is you wanna make it kind of in a square shape as that's what the as that's what will fit this pierogi maker. I like to set my pierogi maker on top and fold the dough over it and then flip it so that it just goes really nicely. And then you just pull the dough over the edges like this and it'll help to cover the entire maker. Once you get it folded over top of the pierogi maker, all you do is you go ahead and take your potatoes and start filling it in so that there's about a teaspoon or so of filling in the pierogi. 
and then you take the rest of your dough. What I like to do is I usually cut my dough into quarters. This makes it really, really easy to do, and then you're gonna do the same thing for the top layer of the dough. It can be very elasticy. Elast is that a word? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but it can be really tricky to work with, and so you'll notice I might like overroll it a little bit because as soon as I pick this up, it's really gonna shrink, and I need it to fit my little pierogi maker dish right there. So um, I'm gonna roll this out just a little bit more because I stopped to talk, and you can already see it's kind of folding in a little bit. So you gotta work really quick when you're making pierogies, and again, the dough can just be really finicky, so just know that. And you'll notice that you can watch me really work around the edges here. I really roll it out knowing that it's gonna kind of fold in. So now I'm gonna take the dough and place it right over top of this one. like that, you lay it right over top. Are you ready for this? Take your rolling pin, start on one side, and just press. So you can see you're starting to see the shape of the pierogies. And so I'm just gonna kind of turn it. So then what I like to do is I like to just kind of take a knife and get in there so that it comes apart really easily. Just kind of cutting along. I don't know if you can see right in there, there's a little lip. And so you really want to kind of like cut in that lip. Otherwise, you can cut the pierogi open. And so as you can see, when you use the pierogi maker, rather than one pierogi at a time, out pop in mine 18 pierogies. Remember this step is optional. I do find it just helps the pierogies to stick. You could just pinch them with your fingers to make them stick together, but I just like to do this with the fork as I think it just looks a little bit prettier. Once you have your pierogies all done, you're gonna go ahead and just flash freeze them. Flash freezing them just ensures that they're not gonna stick together when you put them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer, like regular pierogies you buy at the grocery store.
And you'll notice sometimes this happens and so you just want to kind of push the potatoes in there, squeeze the edges together and then push it down with the fork again. Sometimes you do have to redo the pierogi but very rarely does that happen. I find that this dough is just really, really nice and easy to work with, which is why I love this recipe. And of course, it's my grand's as well, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart. Then with the leftover dough, I'm gonna do it the old school way. I wanted to show you this and I got a little hot so my sweater came off, but what I like to do with the rest of the dough, none of this goes to waste. I go ahead and just use the same method that I showed you in the beginning, just using a cup or a round tool and make the pierogies one by one by hand. So now that the pierogies have been flash freezed, all you do is you put them iced, honestly, just put them in like a little Ziploc bag. You can date it if you want. However, they don't last long enough for me to date them. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and throw these right in the Ziploc bag and then you store them in the freezer. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you found value in it and you enjoyed the homemaking that we did. If you enjoy homemaking videos, again, just make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Make sure you stay tuned as I do have an entire Thanksgiving dinner coming at you guys. And so if you wanna see how I prepped our Canadian Thanksgiving and just what we had, I hope it can give you some motivations, maybe for my American friends who don't celebrate until next month. We'll see you guys in my next video.